Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. It's about that time where the 2025 high school recruiting trail really starts to heat up and Matt Rule and the Nebraska Cornhuskers are set to have a massive recruiting weekend this weekend in Lincoln, Nebraska. want to talk about some of the top targets that Matt Rule and Nebraska will be going after, some of the guys that will be on campus this weekend. And we don't normally do kind of separate episodes in terms of recruiting weekends. But this Nebraska visitor list was way too talented to not talk a little bit about. And we're not going to get to every single player that will be on campus, but I do want to highlight some of the top targets for the Nebraska Cornhuskers that will be on campus this weekend. Really excited to get into this one. And as much as we talked about Nebraska and what they did in the transfer portal the last couple of weeks, you, you make no mistake about it. Like This is a program that wants to build from the high school ranks, get these guys in from high school get him developed. That's how Matt Rule has found his success at Temple and at Baylor, and it's how he's going to find his success at Nebraska as well. And this weekend represents a massive weekend to get a kickstart in the 2025 class. Really excited to get into this one. Many of you guys know, massive fan of talking about talent acquisition, roster construction, the recruiting trail. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support you guys have shown, and a special shout out to the Nebraska fans. I mean, all the go big reds when we're covering the transfer portal commitments. That stuff means the world to me. Cannot thank you guys enough. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this visitor list. And the first one I want to start with for kind of a couple different reasons. It's one of the top linebackers in the 2025 cycle, Christian Jones. I mean, offers from Bama, Oklahoma, Notre Dame. The reason I want to bring up Christian Jones first, one, phenomenal linebacker. Turned on the huddle this morning. I mean, there are so many things that you like about Christian Jones, but the first thing you want to talk about is Matt Rule in the Nebraska Cornhuskers locking down the state of Nebraska. And they did a phenomenal job in the 2024 class getting the top, the top kids from the state to come to Lincoln. And you're looking for him to kind of have a repeat performance of that in the 2025 cycle. And a guy like Christian Jones, the number one player in the state, is a very good starting point. Christian Jones as a player – not many things that you can knock in his game. And what I love most about him is he is kind of the epitome of what you want in this modern day linebacker in terms of being able to operate in space, go sideline to sideline. You look at all these offenses going to kind of that spread attack, trying to get a ton of speed on the field. When you have linebackers that can cover tight ends up the seam, go tackle running backs in the flat in space and also be physical within the tackle box. That is exactly what you want. And that's exactly what Christian Jones brings to the table. And when you turn on some of the high school filming, he is lining up as an edge rusher, rushing the passer. He's lining up kind of as a, a nickel at some points, playing in space, working against slot wide receivers. And then he's a guy that's an off ball linebacker that can go sideline to sideline, get downhill, be extremely physical at the point of attack. You look at the frame, I mean, 6'3, 215 pounds, probably gets up to 230 as he gets to Nebraska. There are not many boxes that Christian Jones does not check. And in this Tony White defense, where you're going to get asked to do so many different things, part of the beauty of Tony White's defense is he kind of takes guys like Christian Jones and uses them in a multitude of different ways. I mean, you'll see Christian Jones probably line up as a nickel. You'll see him come off the edge. You'll see him play that traditional linebacker position. This is, I think, a match made in heaven for what Tony White wants to do on defense. And obviously, Christian Jones being a phenomenal player that can do a ton of different things for a defense. Christian Jones, probably one of the top targets for Nebraska in this 2025 class. Getting him on campus will go a long way into landing this commitment. We'll keep an eye on Christian Jones as it plays out. The next guy I want to talk about and kind of sticking with the, the idea of locking down the state of Nebraska is Chase Lofton, the number two player in Nebraska, also going to be on campus. And what I like about Chase Lofton, one, you have to fill out the frame. And I think we all know that. And it's not rare to see juniors and sophomores in high school have the frame and just have to fill it out, right? 6'5", 200 pounds. You expect him to probably get to 240 when he's playing tight end at the college football level. But one thing you cannot teach, right? You can teach getting him in the weight room, getting a couple peanut butter and jellies in him and putting on the weight. You can't teach the frame that Chase Lofton has, but more importantly, you can't teach the movement skills, right? At 6'5", 200 pounds, he is a very smooth operator, plays above the rim, can go up, make those contested catches, has a massive catch radius, and you look at Nebraska and kind of what they want to do, attack in the middle of the field 
with their tight ends. I mean, getting a big body that's a fluid mover working the middle of the field is going to be absolutely massive. And we've talked about this a couple of times, having Dylan Raiola locked in in that 2024 class and Daniel Kalen. I mean, it suddenly becomes a more appealing spot for these like really dynamic pass catchers to come to Nebraska because you know you're going to have a very good quarterback throwing you the football and you're going to have opportunities to put up numbers, right? In 2023, it became, I mean, kind of tough to sell Nebraska as an offense for some of these playmakers to come to and kind of really thrive and put up, put up a lot of yards, put up a lot of points on the board. You have Daniel Kalen. Yeah, you have Dylan Raiola. I think that helped grab Isaiah Nayor and Jamal Banks in the transfer portal. You suddenly can sell. You're going to have a very good quarterback getting you the football during your time in Nebraska. Chase Lofton, another very, very intriguing target. Again, tight end position. Nebraska has done a phenomenal job recruiting it, obviously, with Carter Nelson. You have Thomas Fedona already on campus. This is another really, really kind of difference maker at that tight end position. And the next guy I want to talk about, kind of sticking with that pass catcher group is Isaiah Mose coming from Missouri. He's the number one player in the state. Coming from the powerhouse Lee Summit, uh, Williams Winery came from there last class. I mean, this is another guy that a couple things that I really like about him. One, uh, and something that gets lost in the conversations, what do you look like putting on the helmet and, and shoulder pads on Friday night? And Isaiah is a guy that has been extremely productive. Going back to his sophomore year, over 900 receiving yards, smooth operator, right? He has burners. He can. He has kind of that that breakaway speed. But what's most important to me is that he is when he's running his routes, when he's moving with the football in his hands, he's very smooth, can change direction, can vary his speeds. That is what you're seeing. Most wide receivers have the most success at the college football level and the NFL level. Yes, it's nice to have that blazing track time, but can you throttle it down? Can you create separation? Can you make people miss after the catch? That's kind of where Isaiah really thrives. And you'll see him line up in the backfield be a running back. They just want to get him the football any way they can. Has a very nice frame as well. Probably gets up to 200 pounds. This is another guy that you talk about Nebraska trying to find difference makers on the outside. Something that was sorely missed in 2023. A guy like Isaiah Mose, I think would go a long way in getting some more playmakers within this offense. Last guy in the 2025 class that I want to highlight that will be on campus. And another one that I just think is quite frankly a perfect fit in this Tony White scheme is Jaden Woods. Another guy coming from the state of Kansas, two things that jumped out to me. One, devastating first step. And this is a guy that is twitched up, can get off the line of scrimmage as kind of that bursty, bendy edge rusher extremely well. And a guy that plays with such a high motor. And another thing that gets lost in the conversation of talking about these high school kids, like how hard do they play on Friday nights? especially at that edge rusher position where you can get a lot of production by just not quitting on plays, continuing to get after the passer, chasing plays down from the backside. No doubt that is something that stuck out to Matt Rule and this coaching staff and this personnel staff on the film. And Jaden Woods, a guy that physically extremely gifted in terms of getting off the football, but man, does he play extremely hard. Multiple reps on his film of him just continuing to get after it. I would love that fit just from a – from a personality culture standpoint, Jaden Woods kind of fits how Nebraska wants to play that tenacious defense and another good scheme fit, a guy that can stand up, be an edge rusher, can put his hand in the dirt, maybe even play that three tech as he continues to put on weight. And again, Tony White wants to get multiple and versatile with how he has his defensive front. A guy in Jaden Woods who could kick into the three tech, maybe play on the outside. Uh, another really intriguing prospect for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And the last guy I want to talk about, now this is going to the 2026 class, but you have to talk about him because it sounds like Nebraska really in it for this one. And that's Jackson Cantwell, the number one offensive tackle in the 2026 class. And I mean, watching a little bit of him, and I've watched him a couple of times before, special is probably the word I'd use. And you'd love to see the traction that they're getting in Missouri. Uh, Missouri is a state that has a lot of talent that Nebraska could really want to tap into Jackson Canwell. It's really rare to see an offensive lineman this developed, but also this developed and carrying their weight the right way, right? Six, seven, 300 plus pounds carries that 300 extremely well, has phenomenal feet for someone this size. I mean, there's a reason he's the number one offensive tackle in this class, a top five national player. There's not a box 
that he does not check. And this is not the first time that he's been on campus for Nebraska. And you talk about Nebraska trying to really establish the line of scrimmage. All right. We talked about the pathway for Nebraska getting where it wants to go under Matt Rule 1. It is crushing the high school recruiting trail, getting guys in, getting them developed. But it is also establishing the line of scrimmage, being a force up front, something that you just didn't see during the Scott Frost era. Many of you guys have heard me talk about that. Just the lack of. I mean, talent was coming in, but the development really wasn't there. You saw that kind of come on for Matt Rule during the end of that Nebraska season in 2023. Nebraska wants to be a team that can run the football, control the line of scrimmage, and kind of take that, that uh, probably the framework of how Michigan just won a national championship, right? Michigan did not win a national championship by getting the flashy wide receivers and having a, a top five class according to 24 seven sports. They won a national championship by getting guys who were kind of under the radar, but guys that they knew they could develop along the line of scrimmage and win that way. In an era of college football where so many teams are going to that spread attack and trying to win with speed and space, Michigan went the other way and established the line of scrimmage and won up front. And I think that's how they won a national championship. And you look at Nebraska and how Matt Rule wants to get Nebraska where it wants to go. I mean, and a guy like Jackson Cantwell would mean massive things for this Nebraska offensive line. This is by far the most important position group that Matt Rule wants to recruit. A guy like Jackson Cantwell, who there is not a flaw in his game, a phenomenal student as well, 4.0 GPA I read, I mean, would be massive for this Nebraska program. Now, that's not even, I don't even think that's a third of what's going to be on campus for Nebraska uh, this weekend. Didn't have time. We'd go for a hour and a half if we talked about every single every single recruit that was going to be on campus for Nebraska. Wanted to highlight some of the guys that really stood out to me. We'll see how this one plays out. I don't know if you'll get any commitments. And this is very early on in the cycle, but it's nice to see Nebraska, you know, getting that start, starting to get that contact going with some of these guys. Really excited to see how this one plays out again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. Too talented of a recruiting weekend. Not to talk about for Nebraska. Appreciate y'all. If y'all do guys, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.